Welcome back to another OHIO podcast live call-in show. Doing it live, wild man, on a Friday night, NCAA basketball style, brother. How's your bracket looking? Not bad, not bad. You know, uh, better than the SEC's brackets looking right now. Coming out dunking on the SEC to start off tonight's live call-in show. I see there. Just saying. Just saying you know? Hey. You know, last night, I when I went to bed, I had only one loss on my bracket. One. Doggone Kentucky. Hey. And, and who, like I had I in, said, who I had, had in, that. Who I had in the final freaking four. <laughs> Thanks to the boys over at 97 won the fan there in Columbus because their expert put me onto that one. Dylan Kuhn in the house. How could you be living at a time like this? Well, Dylan... If I could move my computer, I would show you that right now I'm watching uh, Zach Eady get a miss on a three-pointer and slam dunk it in. So uh, I'm I'm living vicariously through you is what I'm doing. So that's what's happening tonight, Dylan, is I've got Purdue winning the NCAA basketball tournament because of my man Dylan. Dylan convinced me through his – through his um, Posts about, uh, posts about his father that I just couldn't help it. This is going to be Zach Eady's year. Purdue's going to do it. This is all I'm going to say, Dylan. How could we be going live right now? Because, honestly, I just don't care. My guys are playing in the NIT, so I just don't care. <laughs> mm, my wife just brought me some, some hot tea. Mmm. Thank you, honey. Nice. Yes. All right. She spoils me. What can I say? We've got an amazing show for you guys tonight. We're going to be talking about, um, well, which room is better, Chris? The wide receiver room or the defensive back room at Ohio State? Um, there is definitely some uh, chatter over at the Woody Hayes Center, that the defensive backs have caught up with the uh, wide receivers. And I, quite frankly, Chris, think they might have passed them. And here's why. The wide receiver room is much younger than it has been in the last few years. And that defensive back room is very veteran-filled. And it only goes to say that year three now, of having the best defensive back coach in the country, um, you're gonna it's gonna happen that way. Uh, there's just no way around it. Tim Walton is uh, is the man. Uh, he is uh, Brian Hartline 2.0 on the defense with a little bit more gray. Um, but uh, I'm telling you what, man, from what I'm hearing coming out of the Woody Hayes Athletic Center this week, the cornerbacks are for real. The defensive backs are for real. That backfield, defensive backfield, is just legit. Tyler's in the house. He says, OH, IO, buddy. Um, Derek Dennis Vance is with us tonight. Good to see you, Derek. Yo, boys, what's happening, Derek? Good to have you with us tonight. Feel free to call in, my man. Uh, he says, I love me some zone six, but those BIA boys are nasty. Yes, they are. Yes, uh, we've got a fun uh, audio clip we're going to run for you guys. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of back and forth and a little bit of chatter from Brian Hartline and Tim Walton uh, talking about their two rooms and how their two rooms um, kind of reflect one another and help each other out. Uh, you can call the show right now, 567-483-1999. Party like it's 1999. Wild man, did you party in 1999? Man, it was so good I don't even remember. <laughs> I do. I remember Y2K. I remember that night. Uh, Prince sang a song about it, man. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Uh, oh, that's hot. I'm just not much yeah. of a Prince fan. What? Get out of here. That's not true. He had the number one halftime uh, halftime show of the Super Bowl, you said. He did. Doesn't mean I'm a fan. Oh, you're nuts, man. You're nuts. All right, let's play this. Let's play this audio clip. Uh, 
Derek, boys, I was a freshman in high school in 1999. I was a I was a junior, so I got two years on you, big guy. I was eight years removed. Yeah, Chris. Chris was already uh, married with children. Love. Uh, yes. Marriage, love, and marriage. Well, I didn't have the children, but I was already married the first time. Yeah, I got married in '96. So. Beautiful. All right, let's play this short audio clip of Brian Hartline and Tim Walton talking about their rooms and talking about how their rooms re reflect each other and help each other out. By the way, do you know how to sh sharpen iron, Chris? Iron sharpens iron, Eric. There you go. Check it out, guys. You're going to love this. Oh, it's great. It's competition's even even more awesome. Like the chippiness, the chirping, the the fun, the you know, it's even heightened because, like you said, I mean, at one point, you know, it, you know, it wasn't that way. So uh, it's a lot of fun. They win, we win. It's back and forth. It's a uh, heavyweight, you know, fight daily, and it's a lot of fun. And it's pretty cool because when guys do come visit uh, as recruits, they see it, and that's one of the first things they say is. The chippiness, the competitiveness uh, is is really different. So we're having a lot of fun with it. It's been a fun uh, first four days. The iron shop is iron. So, you know, you get to see that every day at practice. That helps you grow. It's no better uh, thing to go against every day than to see that on a daily basis. Yeah, it's done balanced up a little bit now. Uh, that goes with great competition. We have the uh, we go against the best receivers in college football. So that helps escalate your growth process. Because if you don't figure it out real fast, you'll get embarrassed. Um, so that competition, but what happened with that, our guys start competing, our guys start growing, our guys got better, and now it's even up a little bit. So when well, you get really good work at practice today, you know what I mean? So it's competitive, it's fun. Those guys both on both sides of the ball care about each other. So it's great competition, and they're all real, real close. So you know what I mean? It's that stuff that gets us better uh, that will prepare us for, for Saturday. Iron sharp at iron, brother. Iron sharp at iron, Chris. That's what's going on. Hey, Sarah agrees with you, by the way. She says, I agree with Chris. Good halftime, but not a fan. She's such a wise woman. Sarah, we're about to do skins versus blouses. And that's a reference. If you know that what that reference means, you are a good human being. <laughs> uh, Billy Bob's in the house. Hey, uh, Billy Bob, I got something to say to you. Thank you, my man. Billy Bob, Billy Bob became our fifth member of the OHIO podcast. Number, Billy Bob's number five. Uh, $3.99 a month. That's all it costs to uh, say thank you to us. Uh, be a member, and you would get this as one of your things. So, Billy Bob, you're going to be having one of these coming your way. Uh, let's see here if I can do this properly. Boom, there we go. The OHIO podcast T-shirt official member. So Billy Bob is an official member. He'll be getting his T-shirt in the mail here shortly. So I'll be in uh, contact with you. Uh, Derek said that's a hard pass for him on skins versus blouses. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, do you even know what that's a reference of, Chris? The only thing I can think back to is a kid playing shirts versus skins in basketball. Man. Okay. Okay. Dave Chappelle did a skit. Dave Chappelle did a skit where he was Prince and doing a, a playing basketball pickup game at his mansion. And instead of shirts versus skins, it was it was it was uh, skins versus blouses. <laughs> so that's where that, that that that's the reference there. It's hilarious. It's funny. Trust me. Uh, Larry Daniels in the house. Let's rock it, guys. Rainy F L A. Rainy in Florida. It was rainy in the uh, Central Ohio as well today, Larry. Uh, yeah, there you go. See, Sarah knew it probably when he played Dave C, Dave Chappelle. Yep. That's not. There you go, babe. Nice job. Phone lines are open, guys. We'd love to talk to one of you tonight. Uh, give us a call. Uh, we got phone lines are wide open, so give us a call. Anybody wants to call, 567 483 1999. Chris, let's go here. Okay. Which room's better and why? Wide receivers? defensive backs you, you know the wide receivers have been so good for so long but i have to agree with you i think that the defensive backs have actually surpassed them uh the the level of maturity the level of experience now in that defensive back uh, backfield i believe slowly but surely the talent level is actually catching up as well um you know we're now getting these these young corners in the way that heartline has been bringing in the young five-star receivers we're seeing Walton do that with young corners now. 
Um, the huge pickup with Caleb Downs makes an instant impact. Uh, you know, instantly makes that room better. Uh, at this point, I think that it's it, the, it goes to the defensive backs, and then if you're looking at the actual performance, I'd have to think the defensive backs are winning a little bit more right now, based on the fact that you've got a new quarterback. Um, you're still toying around with who's going to play where with the receivers, and you know I think these defensive backs are just at another level right now. Um, you know, once you get past the starters, we've got decent depth. Um, I do believe once you get past the three deep, maybe the four and fives match up a little better for the receivers than they do the, the DBs. But, We're talking fourth string, fifth string. Well, I'm just saying once you get past the the initial four <laughs> or five, not necessarily string, but the top four or five guys at the top. Oh, of the okay. I was like, whoa, wait a second, like. <laughs> um, I mean, how many how many starters are coming back? Now you can't count thing. you can't count Sonny because he's no, moving to the linebacker position. room. But you got David Igbe, Igbenosin at cornerback, Denzel Denzel at cornerback, Latham, Latham at safety. Uh, well, you know what? We can count. Um, what's his name from Alabama as a starter? Yeah, he started Caleb in Alabama. Started Caleb Alabama. Downs. So there's four. And led their team in tackles, by the way. Yeah, was their best defensive player. Um, so really, only you're only having to replace one starter, in all honesty. Um, and if you look at it, you're talking about that nickel, uh, the nickel safety guy, for the most part. And, and you're going to see that probably done. I would Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Hancock, Jordan Hancock Jahad Matthews, Carter. Jahad, Car- Jahad Carter started for Syracuse two years ago. Well, yeah, and if you look at Hancock, who uh, has done it before, if you look at Jermaine Matthews, who did it a little bit in high school, these are guys that have actually got playing time from last year. So it's not like these guys are just, you know, wet behind the ears guys who are just making it to campus for the first time. This is a talented and deep room. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think the defensive backs have the edge right now. So. KP says, I would say the DB room is more proven, but the yeah. wide receiver room has more upside. Well, I will say this. Um, Brian Hartline uh, appears to be infatuated with Brandon Ennis and the, and the strides he's made this offseason. We know what we have in a Mecca. And then on top of that, Jeremiah Smith became the fastest Buckeye ever to, four days or something like that. to lose his black stripe in only four practices. He walked on campus. The day he walked on the campus, Jeremiah Smith was a grown man. Yeah. Had a body that looked like he had been in the a Body by Mickey program for at least two to three seasons. Um, he physically can play the position now. And what uh, Brian Hartline said was he knows how to communicate the mistakes he's making. So he's speaking like a veteran. He's got, he's he got a high football IQ, yeah. And, Eric, I mean, if you look in the past, Brian Hartline and, and most of the coaches are always really hesitant to start heaping the praise to start pushing too fast, too hard on these young guys. They're not push, pushing the brakes at all with Jeremiah Smith. They are not pumping those brakes one bit. They are just saying, yes, he is this. It almost reminds me of, if you think about LeBron when he went to the NBA coming out of high school, and they said he's physically ready to play this game now. It's very rare that you get somebody who's physically ready to play in that first year. This guy walked on campus and was ready to suit up and go. Did I just hear the wild man reference that Jeremiah Smith or compare Jeremiah Smith to LeBron James? As far as readiness and as far as uh, physical readiness to to play the game, yes. To play his game, yeah. Okay. That's... (laughs) 
<laughs> that's that's some seriously uh, big shoes right there. If you're if you're gonna make that uh, comparison, Billy Bob says Malik Hartford at safety. Um, if I'm not mistaken, f- feel free to correct me in the chat or correct me, Chris. Malik Hartford is playing the same position Caleb Downs is. He is. Um, so, although who who knows who's playing what at this point, Eric? They're talking about moving everybody around. We could have Caleb Downs at defensive end by the time this thing's over with. I don't know. You know, they're talking about defensive ends playing linebacker. We're talking about linebackers that's uh, you know stepping back and playing the nickel safety. We we've got you know. Inside linebackers going to the outside. We got all the safeties moving around. Corners playing safety. Safeties playing corner. We don't know what they're going to do. That's just the beauty of where Ohio State is at right now with the talent they have. They have so many variables, so many things that they can hit you with, that if Jim Knowles really gets creative, it's going to be insane what this team is capable of doing. Derek says he totally agrees with KP in the DB room, more proven wide receiver room, higher upside. It's a great feeling to know if the opponent's offense wants to air the ball deep down the field. I feel so much better with the DB room than I have in quite some time. Well, and Tim Walton said it, Eric. His DBs are practicing against the best receivers in the country right now. Iron sharp and iron. Iron sharp and iron. Iron sharp and iron. That should be maybe a T-shirt. It's a beautiful thing. The Ohio really podcast, like Iron Sharp and Iron. Yeah, I like it. It's actually a biblical verse, too. So I like that as well. Um, phone line's open, guys. We want to know your opinions. We want to hear you guys talk about that. Are you? Do you want to talk about uh, which room is better between the wide receiver room, defensive back room? Do you guys want to talk about Jeremiah Smith and how that he shed his black stripe in Free four – days uh brandon ennis and apparently the strides he's made is it possible that our starting lineup at wide receiver next year is a mecca Egbuka, brandon ennis and jeremiah, and jeremiah smith. smith and carnell tate is not the starter is that a possibility or will carnell tate get the nod and they will bring Jeremiah Smith off the bench first. I, I think you're going to see a very strong four-man rotation with four guys getting a lot of minutes. So, and, and you're going to see other guys contribute as well, but you're going to see a, a core four that are getting the, the majority of the minutes. 407, I see you, my man. Let's see. 407, I believe this is a.k.a. Billy Bob from Billy Bob's Backyard Barbecue, our newest official member. Billy Bob, what's going on tonight, man? Well, you know, it's a rare Friday night. I'm still uh, still alive and kicking. You're still right? with the living, brother? <laughs> so, uh, what's that? I said you're still awake and with the living tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm always with the living, but I'm still awake. Yeah. So let's not confuse the two. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So foremost, my uh, Malik Hartford comment was, uh, I maybe I misunderstood. You were just talking about guys that coming back that would make a difference. Not that he would overcome, you know, overtake Caleb Downs, but here's a, a kid, I think he's coming back as a true sophomore, right? He was a true freshman yes. last year. You are and, correct. Uh, and he started a couple games mm-hmm. based on injuries. I think uh, when Ransom and uh, I know Sonny came in there, but, you know, he he actually played really well, right? He did, yeah. Uh, I uh, okay. Well, I was hoping you were going to say that's correct because that was my thought. But anyway. Go ahead. He in two games started last year. He started in two games, uh, came off the bench, uh, played more in the second part of the year than in the first part of the year, which makes sense being a freshman. Right. Ten total tackles, um, two pass deflections. So he's averaging one pass deflection per start, which is pretty good. Uh, so 6'2", 194 pounds. 
uh, and and he's from the state of Ohio, Westchester, Ohio. So he's a he's a Buckeye kid, right? So all of those right. things. So this is one of the, this is one of the reasons I listen to the show because you know you gave me like the exact stats, Bogsy. Usually I get that out of wild man, like okay, uh, this many blocks, this many deflected passes, and you know he's six two, whatever. I mean, I don't have time to to look this up, so that's why. I, I write this down when I listen to you guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I, and you know what? I'm th- I'm thankful that Chris is the stats guy because I don't have time to look him up either. But I, I typed him in there real fast. So not saying <laughs> I had that off the top of my head because I did not. Um, there's a lot up here, and a lot of it, it doesn't have to do with Ohio State football because I do have to make a living. But uh, um, Billy Bob, how's retirement going, my man? Are you enjoying life down there in sunny Florida? Well, hell yeah. Although today it's uh, kind of gloomy and uh, rainy. And we we have one of these El Nino days. You know, for those of you that don't know, El Nino is like, there's two weather patterns, El Nino and La Nina. So, and this is like an El Nino winter for Florida, which is a, Florida typically in the winter is dry and in the summer is rainy. And this year we have kind of a rainy winter with these cold fronts moving through. And today is one of those. So I don't want to bore you with on a sports show with, uh, you know, Wally Canan, the weatherman out of Cleveland, Ohio. But, um, uh, but, uh, I, won't, I won't ask you the difference between El Nino and La Nina because I don't want you to get in trouble tonight with uh, Mrs. Billy Bob. But uh, that would be a funny joke if. Oh, yeah, no, she would. Be, she's okay with it because La Nina is a drier. So we're going to transition into this drier summer. Probably not quite as warm, but um, you know, Mrs. Billy Bob. By the way, she said uh, just a few minutes ago, and I, I put out a a static post as opposed to a video. But um, she said, oh, did you find somebody to uh, vent to? Because I was watching, um, I was, I am watching the tournament. And I was like talking to the TV and yelling to the TV. And she's like, oh, you found somebody to vent to. <laughs> Is that going okay? <laughs> and so I, I posted like, Mrs. Billy Bob thinks I, I need somebody to vent to. Is there anyone out there that, you know, wants to vent with me about, and not all bad venting, right? Because some of it's like good venting, like that kid from, can, can we talk a little basketball right now? Or do we have, uh, are we talking? I mean, to, I know we're talking receiver room. It is tis, uh, tis the season to hoop it up. So yeah, let's talk about it. How's okay. your, pra- how's your bracket looking, so man? Yeah, it's, I'm sure it's busted, <laughs> you know, just like, just like my give a damn it's busted, you know, a country song. My, I forgot who sang that. My give a damn is busted. It sounds like so, something Waylon Jennings would Terry Clark. Sing. Terry Clark from uh, Canada. But anyway. Okay. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Mean, like, la- like last night, that kid from Oakland with gulky, grunky, whatever, it hit 10 threes. You watch that game? I did, because unfortunately, Billy Bob, I had Kentucky going to the Final Four. Yeah, yeah. Did you have, uh, who just got, did you have Florida? I had Florida. Oh, you had them going to the Final Four. Yeah, I had Kentucky in the Final Four, but I I did have Florida winning one game. Okay, well, that that, that didn't happen. Nope. And uh, there's another game that... uh, who else just won? It was an upset here. Uh, oh, Auburn got beat. Yes, hey, yes. By yeah. Yale. <clears throat> the Yale. Hey, the, the was it the Yale Bulldogs? Are they yep. the Bulldogs? That they are. So, oh. What's that, what's that, what's that Chris? No, no the, I said they are the Bulldogs, yes. Yeah. Jody Messina. Jody Messina. Mrs. Mrs. Boggs, Sarah said Jody Messina. Give a damn's busted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. 
Yeah. Don't don't question her about her nineties country. She's all over that. Oh no, no. <laughs> no, she is. I agree. Wholeheartedly. So uh So l- let me let me yeah, throw this I mean, let me throw this out at you, Billy no. Bob. I got I got I was doing some mental gymnastics today on my bracket, and I wanna see if you if you okay. think that this is legit or not. So a lot of people okay. don't remember because they don't remember the beginning of the season because of how the season went. But do you re- right. Ohio State opened their season by beating Oakland, who just yep. beat Kentucky. Yale, yep. Yale just upset Auburn. Mm-hmm. Yale was the number one team from the Ivy League. Ohio State right. just beat the number two team from the Ivy League in. Cornell, right? Is that what they were called? Cornell. Cornell. Corn- Cornell. And yeah. Cornell beat Yale earlier this season. Of course, Yale beat them in the tournament, but Cornell beat them earlier in the so, season. So it's a fact that Ohio State beat Kentucky. Is that what you're So saying? follow my mental math here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Ohio State <laughs> under John Diebler is better than both Auburn and Kentucky. You agree or disagree? I don't protest. Yeah, because we we know how all that works, right? You know, Joe beat Billy and Billy beat Sam and Sam like it it all sounds good and then reality sets in and we gotta play each other and who knows what happens on any given night. Yes. I hey, mean, look! Look at what we're look where we're dealing with in the tournament. I mean, threes beating thirteens, and or I mean, thirteens beating threes. It, it one of the interesting things about the tournament is just look at Cornell and Ohio State and NIT. I mean, Cornell played that Princeton offense. Guys, I hate. I hate that. Oh, I hate trying to coach against that. Yeah, they, it, it's hate to coach against it, but it's a great offense to watch, right? Threes and backdoor cuts. And, I mean, it was very frustrating to watch. So here's the secret about the Princeton offense. You have to have extremely intelligent kids to run that offense because – Yep. The spacing you have to create in order to have successful backdoor cuts means that you have to play chess, not checkers offensively. In other words, I'm setting you up with passing for three passes later, and you have to be in sync offensively as a unit in order to do that. And too many of today's athletes are, I'm just going to chuck the three, or I'm going to drive it to the hoop, and they don't know how to effectively use picks and no. backdoor cuts and passing to set yourself up on the backside of an offense like they could. That was impressive yep. to watch. It really was. That was old school basketball. It, it was it was impressive. But I'll give you two. I'll give you two things. Number one, that is. Frustrating as it was to watch that we were like giving up all these backdoor cuts, it was no more than they have been doing all year by percentage. Percentage wise, they've been doing that like 61.7 or 61.8% of the year. And in the Ohio State game, it was so let's say they were doing 61.8% for the season and the Ohio state game was 61.7. So was even. that's what they did all year average. We didn't get our, we didn't get our butt kicked any more than anybody else did all year long. Hmm. So that kind of felt good. The other thing is that, um, Oh God, I got a brain cramp here. Um, I'll think about it in a minute. No worries. Um, while, Keep going. While you're Keep thinking of, while you're thinking about it, Billy Bob, I want to put up this comment right here. Um, 
KP talking about Carnell Tate. He said, uh, not possible, Eric, at, le- at least not this year. Don't forget the comment Marv made about Carnell last year, and he was always the first wide receiver in the in the game after Marv, Emeka, and Julian. I saw what? Carnell Tate at the beginning of practice last year look next to Marvin Harrison as the best wide receiver in the room. I remember coming into uh, our report that evening, Chris, and doing a video with you that said Carnell Tate is just different and he's better than Julian Fleming. And I stand by this comment and I will continue to stand by this comment. Ryan Day and Brian Hartline should have played John, uh, Carnell Tate over Julian Fleming. Stand by that comment. I, I said it. Th- I said it then, and I'll say it now. Well, Carnell Tate. Well, first of all, he's he's got another level. He's got another level of speed versus what Julian Fleming had. Well, he could catch the football, number one. Well, he could catch the football, but I mean, he could, he was the kind of receiver who could take the top off the of defense. Just Julian, Julian Fleming, Fleming. Julian Fleming was a good, better blocker. Let's just yeah. call it like it is. He and he had more blocker. experience. Yeah. All and right, I Billy. Think you really wanted to give him the chance. Yeah, sure. Billy Bob, do you remember what you were thinking of there? No, I don't. I, I, I just had this massive brain cramp. But I will say this. The Buckeyes, again, under Jake Diebler, that they are fighters, right? They were down 19-9. to nine. That game went back and forth. Uh, we lost. Thornton to an ankle injury, which on TV they said it was cramping, but it turns out it was an ankle injury. And Thornton didn't play probably at least the last 10 minutes of the game. And uh, they fought hard. And, and what was really crazy to see in that game was the number of alley-oops, not only to uh, Alfara, but to battle and some other guys and uh, some stuff we did not see all year long. And um, I thought it was great. We play tomorrow, what, tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Uh, yeah. Against, Virginia uh, tech. tech. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I'll let you guys um, continue to talk football. I just wanted to call in since I figured you had a little opening, and I'd slide my way in. I'm there. glad. And you know what? I'm glad you did, Billy Bob. And here's the thing: I'm keeping a tally of who calls us. And right now, Billy Bob, I would like you to know you're in the lead by one now. So, <laughs> well, I I appreciate that, and maybe I'll call back in five minutes, and then I'll be in the lead by two. <laughs> I gotta I gotta hit the receive button first, buddy. <laughs> oh, hey. I do have one last question for I go. Yeah. So, as you know, Acoustic Larry and I have done a couple episodes of uh, Let's Go RB. Yes, I need to, I I need to catch up on I'm those. Correct. Yes. I don't know if I'm correct in this. And Mrs. Boggs, do you have a, do you have a pop-up? We uh, good Correct. question. No, we we have a we have a travel trailer now. We started okay. with a pop up when we uh, after we got married. So I had I had only gone tent camping in my life a couple times when okay. I was a young, when yeah. I was a youngster. You know, when teenager, church camp, that type of thing, and um, camped in the backyard a few times with my little kids when they when they were younger. Um, and she was used to RVing. And I said, well, let's start with a pop-up first and see how it goes. And we loved our little pop-up, but here's the thing. The pop-ups are so hard to maintain mm-hmm. that I was I just got tired really? of it. So yes, they're they're really hard to maintain. And we canvas and Yeah, so I traded it in for a travel yep. trailer about three years ago. And uh, we have a we have a Coleman? No. What do we have? Riverside? Riverside. Sarah will have to chime in for me what kind of tra- travel trailer we have. But so you go to Indian Lake too, right? We you have. Indian Lake we have been that. to Indian Lake, yes. Got uh, really significantly affected by the tornadoes um, yes. a couple weeks ago or yeah. last week. Whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sarah showed me um, – well, first off, I watched a video of some people who, who do a YouTube channel uh, – um, 
uh, traveling all over the Midwest camping. And so they went there to help do be a part of the cleanup, and they had a video. It's called uh, Traveling Buckeyes, if anybody wants to pop in that into their YouTube and look them up, Traveling Buckeyes. And uh, the video, it's a 20-minute video of just the destruction of, of Indian Lake. It is – it's heart-wrenching. There are people who Lenny yeah. have lost everything. There's nothing left. Uh, the uh, amount of just uh, sad. Yeah. Um, the amount of um, debris floating around the lake is just. They'll be cleaning it up all year, and the I guess the park, the state park, got obliterated as well, and um, so they have closed down that park. And they have. There's no word on when they might reopen it, so it might be it might be open for um, a while. And here on cue is is my lovely wife, a Coachman Catalina Legacy. Man, she, she I'm surprised she didn't pull out the VIN number on that too. <laughs> well done, babe. <laughs> Coachman Catalina Legacy. Well, well, the VIN number may be coming next, but we don't really want to post the VIN number. Because, right. Model numbers. You know, we, don't want any, yeah. we don't want any title uh, after anything. But yeah, yeah Bobby McCormick, uh, Eric, where did you go to church man. camp at? I used to go near Ripley, West Virginia every year. Uh, Hocking Hills is where we went. I went to church camp at oh, Hocking wow. Hills. Not West church Virginia. Hills and oddly enough, I'm... You're familiar with both those places, Hocking Hills and Ripley, West Virginia. Well, you've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. You go down to Ripley, Ohio, down on the river. I've been to Ripley's, believe it or not. Me too. Believe it or not. (laughs) (laughs) So Uh, so here's Larry Larry Daniels chiming in here, Billy Bob. Uh, Larry says, Billy Bob, our classmate Craig O has a cabin at Indian Lake. The big, big O. Ofield was a, a a great guy, and he got his bell rung every football game we played in. It was like every Friday night. All right, we're gonna eat Red Barn, Big Busters, and then we're taking Ofield to the emergency room for a concussion. That's that's the deal. But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, we talked about we talked about you up and then we talked about the high low you know you didn't have a high low but if you guys know about the high lows Mm -hmm. you you cranked them down you cranked them up and all so um on that note i'll probably leave you guys because we're getting too much in the camping and i'm in the glamping by the way hey there's uh, nothing wrong with with glamping, man i'm with you you're with me chris i'm glamping absolutely let me tell you something i tried to tank camp oh it must have been 25 years ago and I discovered that growing up the way I did with my parents having a permanent campsite for so many years I just wasn't made for tent yeah. camping anymore that well it was probably 20 years yeah. ago but I'll tell you what it was about age 30 that I realized I wasn't sleeping on the ground anymore it just wasn't happening <laughs> exactly so uh, in closing I'll say if you want to talk about Ohio State football and football in general and all the things you guys talk about with all the other podcasters you're working with and and planning to to work with. Work with, listen to the OHIO, the Ohio podcast. And if you want some other goofy stuff and way off the wall crap, and in this case, the last two weeks, let's go RVing. Come visit us once in a while. So there you go. Billy Bob. A, hey, a Billy, shameless plug for yeah. Billy Bob's back. Yeah. I was going to tell everybody they need to follow your channel. It's fin- it's phenomenal. It's uh, over on the Facebook. New the the they, new one, right? Yeah. The new one, Bogsy, Billy Bob's Backyard All Access, which is only videos, right? That's right. So there you go. None of the other stuff, only videos. Um, but go ahead. I was going to say, Billy Bob, in closing, if have you ever been to an Ollie's? Oh, yeah, we have an Ollie's right here. I've been to one once, actually. It's, we have one right here in Venice, Florida, Harbor, right next to Harbor Freight, by the way. I I feel like you, Billy Bob's Backyard Barbecue is the online version of Ollie's for content. 
Why is that? Here's the online version of Ollie. Because, like, it's all good. All good stuff, but you have no idea what you're going to get into when you go over there. You're going to come away with something. Your wife's going to look at you. It. You're going to come away with something at Bill, uh, from Ollie's and Billy Bob's, and your wife's going to say the same thing. What would you need that for? <laughs> it, it might be batteries. It might be a cooler. It may be, like, a crescent wrench. It, and it may be, like, some fake flowers. For, uh, if, if you, if you Ollie's here in Marion has a fishing uh, clearance going on right now. A bunch of fishing poles. Oh, okay. I'm not a fisherman, Chris. That's one thing I'm not. Oh, that's a shame. I love to eat fish. How can you live in Florida and not be a fisherman? I know. I can see Billy Bob's next video is fishing with Chris. Here it comes. Hey, we can work that out. <laughs> Maybe I have to do a fishing with fishing with the wild man because, uh, yeah, I'm not – the only time I really enjoyed fishing was I went out with my friend, BDH. Richard Hauser, you can, you know, obviously Richard R is not a D, but you can figure the rest out. BDH, Richard, Richard and I, we went out in his boat. We went out in the mangroves and we were just country music, Billy Bob, Bud Light, just right. And we got shrimp, right? So you put shrimp on the hook. And we we're catching these little baby mangrove snappers. They were throwbacks. But they were like, bam, bam, bam. You're catching, catching, catching. One time, I opened the bale by accident. No no bait on the hook. I dropped it in, and I caught a mangrove snapper. I'm like, okay, that's good for an hour. Let's go to the sandbar. You know, obviously, there's not a real bar at the sandbar. It's just like a sandbar right? you wrapped off of. I know you guys know that, but maybe some of the viewers are not quite as, oh, viewers or listeners aren't quite as adept at the sandbar. So Go check it out. Go check out Billy Bob's channel. You will find something you love. I promise you. Just like if you go visit, uh, shop at Ollie's, you will find something. You're not going to come away. That's empty. right. Or you'll give me the finger or you'll give me the finger. And that's okay. Too. Well, hey, I, some I've been, I've been told I'm number one as well. What? I've been told I'm number one as well. Been given the finger. Oh. We, uh, chime in. Great show. Um, so if I had to give you a, I, um, thought on this, I'm like, Thursday nights to me, Friday nights I'm typically out, but we're in because we got family coming in, and the the job during season was nine to five. But I kind of like Thursday nights. But uh, yeah, you me know, too. Seems like Friday nights you're locked into those. No, uh, not not currently. We were just we just kind of it happened happened the first time, and we've just stuck with it because we've had some good luck with numbers and callers. And so we've just kind of gone well, with good. it, but I do know this and summertime people are not going to want to be online calling us on a Friday night. I, no, I know. No. So, don't, don't I'll be out camping. I, I'll be out camping. I promise you. So <laughs> it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen in uh, this summer, having these Friday night call-in shows, at least not all the time, but yeah, Chris will be out with Tom Sawyer fishing. There you go. Billy Bob, thanks for calling, my man. Appreciate you. You guys have a great night. I appreciate you guys, and uh, have a great rest of the show. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Eric, before you, I, I just got to say, I feel like, and, you know, I love having Billy Bob on, but I, mean, I feel like sometimes we're that 3 o'clock time slob on the fan where we have every intention of talking about sports, but sometimes we just get going on other things. Oh, yeah, completely, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the last two days they've had a fast food bracket they've been working on over oh, there. Yeah, so. they do that every year. Yeah. Uh, Sarah said, no, no, and I want to camp and or hang out on the deck. So, yep, uh, absolutely, babes. That's what we're going to be doing this summer, I promise you. Um, so it won't be on Friday nights this summer, guys. Sorry. If So if you've been liking the Friday nights, awesome, but it's going to change. We have an open line, guys, so when we have time for another caller, so if someone wants to call in, 
by all means, give us a little ringy on the tele, tele Pahoney. Uh, 567-483-1999. Did the Cleveland Indians have some kind of jingle or some kind of uh, joke with their call-in line during rain delays, Chris? The, the Cincinnati Reds had the banana phone. That's what they called it. And it'd go, ring-a-ding-ding, banana phone. And during, during rain delays, back when uh, Joe Nuxall and Marty yeah. Brenneman. Yeah, I remember that. Those guys were great, by the way. Best. I see. I used to set my radio up on my uh, on my window seal as a kid and fall asleep listening to those guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, I listened to the Reds a lot as a kid, and then uh, also, you know, Tom Hamilton up there with the the tribe. And <laughs> did he start at Cincinnati or, or, or at um, the uh, Ohio State? Tom Hamilton was he the voice of the Buckeyes for a while at one time? I don't know if he was the voice of the Buckeyes. He did work with the Buckeyes at one time. I, I thought so. I thought he did. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see if we missed anything here. Brian, Brian's got an interesting comment. UVA, I think that's University of Virginia, right? Made the tournament and the selection chairperson who was seated next to the UVA bench and the UVA D. Hmm. Both need to be gone. Interesting. So a little, little politics, Brian says, going into uh, maybe how Virginia got into the tournament. Um, <laughs> Adam Dowling, SEC, SEC, and then Brian, SEC blows. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. And there, what, what is their record now in the uh, tournament, Eric? Is it uh, one in five? One, is it one in five? Yeah. It's one in five, I think. I think that's what I saw. KP, although, although A&M's gonna A&M's gonna help him out a little. KP's got a question for us tonight. Is anyone feeling worried right now, considering we haven't hired a running back coach yet? I'm not, and, and this is why. I think that they were very close on Stan Drayton, from what I'm hearing, but they couldn't get the buyout worked out. And it, the, the numbers just weren't going to happen. Um, but I'm Stan not Drayton was not team. their first choice or their second. No. I'm not. Well, here's the thing, Eric. We knew this was going to be a challenge with anybody who was an established coach at a big name program because of the timing. The timing. Yes. You know, if this, if if Alford wasn't such a weasel and had just been a man two months before this and said, "Listen." Yeah, I'm mad at you. You didn't give me what I wanted, so I'm going to take my ball and go home and go up to Michigan. If you had just done that in a decent time frame, this wouldn't even be an issue. But no, I'm not overly worried right now. I think we can go coach by committee on it for a little while. If it carries out long term, I'll start to worry about it because it's going to take away from Ryan Day being that CEO of the team he wants to be. But overall, for me, I'm not overly worried at this point. I think that We'll have somebody in there no worse than, you know, I think the spring game. Can we just can we just pull the trigger and hire Pepe Pearson now? I like it. I love the idea of it. What do you have to lose? Name me the last former Ohio State Buckeye who was on the coaching staff who wasn't a home run hire. Yeah. I mean, you look at it right now. we got home runs in Walton, home runs in Hartline. You know, Laurinaitis is going to be there, and he's going to he's going to be a home run guy. Yeah, you, you know, you're not going to go wrong bringing a Buckeye back. Yeah, you're just not. Larry said, and Larry is correct. In Dave's presser, he said he was handling the running backs. He's not, yes, for now, but he's going to have to hire somebody. Um, you can't let that, that take your attention away post spring ball. It's okay till we get up to the spring game if we're coaching by committee or Dave's handling you know, a little more of the running back. But, you know, by the time spring ball is over, you need to have somebody in there. Brian Ober. Sorry, guys. Totally forgot. Gee, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Just kidding with you, Brian. Glad you made it in, man. Um, uh, yeah, I like this comment right here, yeah, Brian. Exactly here. What do you have to lose? See how he does. I mean, he's going to do real well given who's in the room right now. You well, know, Eric he's, Eric, he's had coaching su success where he's gone. Sure. I mean, he may not have been 
an elite coach anywhere necessarily, but he's had success. He's a proven commodity, and he's a Buckeye. Yeah, I'm, now Derek, I love you, man, but no, no. Unless Zeke all of a sudden grows up and becomes an adult, no. I would take Claret back before I'd take Zeke for this. Ooh. I I think I, I think I agree with you on that one, Chris. Because Zeke, Claret has has grown up. Yes. Although he still doesn't make he's, no, he's still not on Ryan's Day's Christmas card list. But. No, probably not. No. Uh he's Keith fine. Byers, again, when when has he he's not even in coaching. No. Right? No. He, he does a radio coach. show. Right? Doesn't he do a radio show from Philly? He I did. Think. I don't know if he still does. Yeah. Um, so he's not even – Pepe Pearson has been coaching for 20 years. He's been working his way up the ranks, man. Um, uh, Maurice Claret. I mean, yeah, we just mentioned it. But, again, he's not – they're he's not going to hire someone who's not been coaching. It's just not going to happen. And you're going to need somebody who's got coaching experience and a high football IQ. Jane. James Laurinaitis wanted to coach, and they said no, and he had to go to Notre Dame and prove himself before they would take him back. So there's no way that they're going to just pick a former Buckeye off the street and let him co- let, let that guy coach the room. Pepe Pearson, in my opinion, right now, might be the best option. Um, Jeremiah Yoder, what do you guys think of Kentucky getting eliminated in the first round last night? Uh, two things. Um, I it loved sucks. it. No, it did, it was not good because I had him in my final four. I, so not good. I, I took the upset on DraftKings. Um, good for you. What'd you win? Five dollar? No, it was a little more than that. Oh, well, you should donate some to the show tonight, Chris. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, John Calipari. Oh my gloriousness! Gloriousness. <laughs> Uh, I agree. John Calipari, uh, I don't agree. He's the most overrated basketball coach of all time. He's got some national championships under his belt. John Calipari got outcoached last, yesterday. Flat out outcoached. I yesterday. will say this. In the beginning when he started at Kentucky, and, and going back to with his, his previous tenures, um, but specifically when he started at Kentucky and the one-and-done rule came in, he really mastered how to use that one and done talent at Kentucky. But I'll tell you what, I think that the game's caught up to him at this point. And I just don't think he has that same competitive advantage that he had before. I do think he's a, he's a good coach. Don't get me wrong. Obviously he's got, you know, what's he got? Three, four national titles between UMass and Memphis, UMass Memphis. and Kentucky. I, I want to say three. Four. Is it I four? Thought he had, I thought he had two with one school. <sighs> now I got to look it up. But, uh, you know, he's. What, he's what about this? Coach. What about this comment? Scotty Graham over Pepe Pearson? Would you take that? I know Jay would. Jay was talking about that with me a couple of days I, ago. To me, I almost feel like that's a coin flip. I don't think you can go wrong either way. <clears throat> I, he's you know, been – well, here's the thing. It has got, it. I was just going to say, you do have to have somebody, like you said, that's got coaching experience, who's got a good football IQ, because you cannot just throw anybody in to run. I don't care what room it is on the offense of a Ryan Day, Chip Kelly offense, because the schemes are going to be complex. 937, I see you. Let's, get, let's, let's go to 937 here. 937. Dylan Coon, what's up, my man? Well, a halftime report, a little stressed, but but things are fine. Uh, yeah, they're fine, I think. Hey, Dylan, everything's all right. Everything's fine. Know. Dude, <laughs> dude, <laughs> you guys are going to blow him no, out half. You're going to blow him out. Don't listen to Chris. You guys are going to blow him oh, out yeah. the second you know, half. Chris, Chris you're, on, you're on my SHIT list. All right, I'm not having it. Not Chris, Chris is like pulling for all the upsets right now. He's like he's like over here with glass slippers everywhere, man. He's like he's like Oprah handing I'm out glass upset, slippers. Except in this game, we don't want an upset in this game. Can't have it. If we do, I'm 
I'm going into a cave for eternity, probably. I, I would love nothing more than to see every number one seed out by the end of the first weekend. Well, no, everyone except Purdue, Chris. Jeez, let's get with it. All of them. Everyone. Everybody. I, where's JR? Jeez. <laughs> JR, JR is currently in meetings right now, <laughs> now believe it or not. Purdue, um, should, Purdue should win this thing. In fact, Purdue honestly and we've should seen probably history, and I don't want history should, repeat should always, or, or in all honesty, Purdue should probably win the whole tournament. They should. I, I if they win the whole damn thing, I I don't know how I'll act. I really don't. I, I I'm not used to having a successful team here. Like what are we? Well, I know you're uh, used to watching uh, a football know. team that just you know stinks. I mean, so it, it, for you to have a winner, I mean, that's a big thing. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. We're a scorn bunch, though. So when things start going awry, we get we get a little get a little hectic. You know, the, the Twitter streets get a little that's okay, a little crazy. But right now that's they're a little okay. calm. So we're good. Well, you don't have to worry about the Twitter stream, Dylan. There's nobody from Maryland on here right now. That's true. That's true. I mean, you guys are in the NIT. It could be worse. Are you ready for this, Chris? What's that? John Calipari has won one championship. Are you serious? 2012. Did you guys see what his buyout is? Kentucky. 2000. No, what's his buyout? Like a billion? $33 million. <laughs> hey, that, that number's cheap for Ross Bjork. He'd be like, That's I, right. I paid a lot more than that to get rid of a coach. <laughs> That's nowhere near the Jimbo money right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jimbo. Man, eighty million just not to to go away. Pay me eighty million to go away, and I'll leave you alone forever. <laughs> oh man, that, I can't even. Believe, like, jeez, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're fine. You're fine. Just, Until just you're not. take a deep breath. Everything's gonna be okay. And you have officially tied Billy Bob at three phone calls now. So you are in first place with Billy Bob on the OHIO podcast call-in show. But should Purdue go down? Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to be tied with a guy like Billy Bob. I love, I love Billy Bob. But should Purdue go down tonight, we will you know, start up a fresh live show so that you can call in and, and you know, be, get that one call ahead of Billy Bob because I want to hear that, that call. If that happens, I'll probably break my iPhone, iPhone and go get a flip phone. So what'll ha- what we're going to do, what we'll have to do is find a way, Chris, to have Billy Bob uh, on at the same time as Dylan, and then you and I can just take a break and let them talk. Yeah. We'll, let, we'll let them host the show. <laughs> I think that's, that's, kind of JR, that's kind of what JR had when I visited his show last year. Me and the other uh, <laughs> guest uh, kind of dominated. Wait, 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 wait. Is this true? This is the first time hearing of this. Calipari, 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 Calipari to the team up north to Michigan. Oh my God! Michigan thinks they can hire anybody. Get out of here. Is that for real? There's no way that happened. No way. Is as Drew- in, you know, Purdue owns the Chrysler Center as we took it over this year. So I mean. Wouldn't they be better off with somebody who's been in a little bit more trouble before? Something, somebody like a Rick Pitino. Calipari's been in trouble. <laughs> I keep saying Calipari. Calipari. Cal- Gosh. Calamari. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like coming up with weird names. Um, I got to ask before the game comes back on, Dylan. Have you ever been to an Ollie's? I have. We just now got one in my neck of the woods. Oh, you guys just got an got an Ollie's. Yeah. Okay. Does does not Billy Bob's backyard barbecue community remind you of an Ollie's online? <laughs> Isn't that does. a perfect description? It does. You just kind of go there, it's and it's like you can find a section of the store to hang out in, and it's like cool, and you meet new people. And then by the time yeah, you meet back up right. with your wife, you guys got like a cart full of stuff that you like didn't even know you needed. 
That's a perfect way to put it. I'm, I love Billy Bob. He's one of I think Billy Bob needs to get a sponsorship from Ollie's is what needs to happen. Billy Bob's Backyard you, Barbecue you, brought, you, brought to you by your local Ollie's. I don't know, we, I don't know what strings we can pull, but we got to pull some strings to make that happen. I don't know. He's you talking about horses. Down Florida? Florida. He's well, talk about horses. Are we putting money down on this or what? I think so. I think they're talking about horsey racing. Oh, does Dylan like the horse races, Dylan? No, I just I just spend lots of money on on the horses because I own a few. So, oh, I have a retired race horse, so that you know that's something. I don't care about a race horse in retirement. I want to I want the fix. You know, you got to tell me who the winner is. I gotta know the I gotta know the story behind this name, Coconut Dreams One Two Three. <laughs> Sounds- Sounds like it's got a story behind it. It does, doesn't it? And after I made the brought uh, <laughs> Billy Bob's backyard barbecue brought to you by Ollie's, he replied, "Ew!" <laughs> so I feel like I feel like <laughs> Coconut <laughs> Dreams might be someone we need to talk to. <laughs> that may be uh, Billy Bob's uh, other alias, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a uh, Big Mac be- uh, Mary. <laughs> Yeah, God love her. I don't know what she's doing tonight. She's probably stress eating while watching the game like I am, but I, I don't know what Mary's been up to. I'll have to, I'll have to call her. She's been looking for Aaron. I, you know, she really likes Aaron. How's she even oh call Aaron? Okay, hold I'm on. Here. This is getting interesting. Coconut Dreams lives in the Manila. Philippines. Manila? The yeah. Philippines is an OSU grad from... Da, 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 da. Okay. Astoria, Ohio, home of wow. Big Nut. This got really interesting. Okay, now my mom's chiming in. This is crazy. Yes, I have been to a Piggly Wiggly. Any, she goes, anyone been to a Piggly Wiggly? <laughs> when I was in Florida, I went to Piggly Wiggly. I love that whenever I come on the show, it just goes off the rails. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, how cool. Hey, Coconut Dreams. Um, I don't know what time it is in the Philippines, but thanks for tuning in. Appreciate that. Um, you guys are our, our yeah. most long distance caller there, Eric. By the way, Coconut Dreams uh, was a football manager in 1986 through 1990. That was right was after with Carl. Right after Carl was there. So I wonder if Coconut Dreams knows Carl Hugler and he. He or she, whoever Coconut Dreams is, corrected me. Big Nut is from Fremont, not Fostoria. Yeah. I, you are correct. My apologies. Thank you. You um, guys really are an international program. We are now, thanks to Coconut Dreams. Um, well, you had Australia, too. However, Australia. Sean okay. Schrock says Fostoria is the home of Damon Moore. So there you go. Hey, um, Dylan, here's my prediction. Mark it down. Go on to whatever betting device you have on your phone, and whatever they're offering you, take the over on Purdue right now. I don't know. I, Go all in. If, if the over Go heart rate, all the over. in. Don't all in. Dylan, it's a trap. Let's do it. If we could get some Buckeyes to send some good vibes to the Boilermakers, I'd appreciate it. You know, we're a stressed, stressed out bunch at the moment. You're you're all good, man. Don't worry about it. Uh, Coconut yeah, Dream says it's watch rest of this game. Nine oh three a.m. Saturday morning in the Philippines, and uh, she says uh, he, she or he says thanks for the show, guys. Yeah, oh, appreciate good it. Morning, Coconut Dream. Yeah, good good Saturday morning. Um, <laughs> and Bobby McCormick said that he has been to Piggly Wiggly's and he has the shirt to prove it. So I love it. <laughs> well, you gotta get a shirt. Yeah. Hey, by the way, if you want one of these shirts, this is a good time to uh, take it. Although, Coconut Dreams, it might be hard to get this to you. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and hit the Join button. And for $3.99 a month, you become an official member of the OHIO podcast. We'll send you an official member T-shirt, uh, just like Billy Bob and Larry Daniels, who's here tonight. Uh, appreciate uh, you guys doing that. Um, and then uh, we are having a huge debate right now. On, in the chat between a Piggly Wiggly's and a Bucky's. That is what the debate is. Now, can I just tell you, I've been to both. I'm not impressed by Bucky's. 
It's a gas station on steroids. That's all Bucky's is. Well, isn't that the name of a Wisconsin mascot? It takes a lot to get Chris's fancy. It well, Chris. Chris is known as our, you know, he's our Debbie Downer here on the show. He's he, <laughs> he keeps us grounded and rooted in in reality, right? Well, I, I'm a realist. Well, Dylan, hey, thanks for calling in. We got we got another caller we need to get to. You're gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. Take the over. You're gonna be fine. That's no, not. Remember. Virginia barely got out of the first round after losing their first round match and then went on to win the national championship a couple years ago. So let's only hope that happens to the boilers. Boiler up, boys. Go Bucks. NIT tomorrow, baby. <laughs> Later. All right. We got another caller we need to get to, Chris. Let's do it. All right. 740. 740-817-4696. You're on the air with us, 740. Who are you? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Brian Oberst. Brian Oberst! Brian! What's happening? Hey, nothing, man. Just wanted to call in here a little bit and throw my take on, like I said, Pepe Pearson. I mean, what do you really have to lose? The guy wants to coach. He wants to come back to his home state. Why not give him a shot? Hey, I'm with Brian you, man. Scared of. I'm with you. I'm with Listen, at this point... You're not going to get the top guys. Here's what's happening, guys. And thank you for getting our show back on the rails, brother. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get the top guys because it, the timing's not right. So what's happening is these guys' agents are coming in to Ohio State and saying, my guy's interested. Ohio State's like, great, we'll give you an interview. And then he, they get offered the job, and then they go back to their employer, and they say, I just got offered the Ohio State job for X amount of money. And their employer says, well, we'll match it. That's what's right. going on right now. We're just being used as a as a leverage. marketing chip. That's all. We're, that's all that's happening. I think Pepe Pearson wants to be here. And you're you're saying we we aren't gonna get the big yeah. Name Eric it kind of sounds like he does. I know he, he does. He won't be a big name guy though. I mean, who's oh. to say that Pepe Pearson Pepe Pearson won't develop into a big name guy? I mean, he's big name I mean, in Ohio he's got State three land. Good running backs to work with. I mean, yeah. doesn't make them look good. Someone, someone, yeah, yeah, four good running backs to work with. If you, if you look at Peoples. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah, believe I it might have been you that said it. Uh, either you or Bobby McCormick, one that said we could coach this this room. Yeah. I think it was Bobby McCormick that said that. Yeah, there's. It doesn't take like I'm not. What I think they're they're worried about is the recruiting now, because you know Tony Alford had relationships with guys in the 2025 and 2026 class. I believe, given Ohio State's NIL, that Pepe Pearson can make up that ground given NIL, and if these guys have good years and they all come out saying, "Hey, Pepe Pearson came in." and really helped out this room and really helped me to have a good season. And I really appreciate Pepe Pierce. You don't think that that resonates with recruits? You know it is. Yeah, I mean, you could probably see what he helped, how he helped Eddie George when how he helped other schools. You could see that. I mean, like you said, what's he got, what do we got to lose? I mean, Ryan Day has said, he, he came right out and said, we're going to take our time on this. And I know from what I have heard, they offered the job to at least two guys who now have aren't coming here. One who used it to get to up his pay at, at uh, over there in Oklahoma, and then the buyout apparently was too much for Temple. They were playing hardball. Um, yeah, KP, he's all over this man. KP, I like this take. Pepe Pearson to Columbus, bring him home. He coached in Columbus for like 10 years over at uh, Ohio Dominican. He actually got the program. Yeah. He was one of the guys who got the program up off the ground. So, I don't know. I just think, yeah. I just, to me, at this point, you bring him in, you give him a one year deal, see how it goes, go from there. I mean, yeah, I mean, He's there too. He's a Ohio guy. He may he may have a connection with some Ohio players. It's all about you know, we have a hard time bringing Ohio guys in. Jeremy Yoder asked this question. 
let's all three answer it. Who would the two of you rather have, Eddie George or Maurice Claret? Uh, Eddie. Eddie George. Eddie George. Hands down. He's got coaching experience. Can I make a just a crazy suggestion here, Eric, as far as the running back coach goes? If we don't have somebody in place soon, you realize there's somebody who's still affiliated with the university who has got a lot of coaching experience, who at one time served as a running backs coach at the University of Cincinnati for five years, Tim Hinton. Oh, wait a minute. Um. Tim Hinton, who are you talking about? Tim Hinton, he's a special assistant to the, uh, to the coach. He's he oh. in football relations now, but he's been a coach at Notre Dame, at Ohio State, at, at UC. I don't know, man. He's he's old. But, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm saying if you need somebody who – if you can't find somebody and you're just looking to put somebody in there in an interim basis so that Ryan Day doesn't have to focus on it, You've got somebody on staff that's got experience. You know what? You know what uh, they were joking about on the fan this morning in my drive in the work was Ross Bjork could do it because he played fullback. Yeah, he played fullback in college. Uh, you know, I'm hearing in the chat they are really talking up Scotty Graham. And I don't dislike that choice, but Scotty Graham hasn't been as vocal as what Pepe Pearson has about coming back. Here's the thing about Scotty Graham, and this is the question I would ask, and here's here's why I'm pushing back a little bit. Does Scotty Graham want to be a coach or does Scotty Graham want to be a athletic director? Yeah, good point. Scotty Graham has done both, but Scotty Graham also um, spent a lot of time in, in athletic departments as well. And I know more recently he was coaching. Uh, Sean, Sean Schrock, Scotty knows how to recruit. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Re, I'm not gonna argue with that because I'm not sure. But you I know, mean, what we, we yeah, I think Pepe happen. could do a pretty good Pepe job recruiting. recruiting. I don't think we can. That he he wouldn't be a good recruiter. Pepe hasn't recruited Division One's the thing. I think that's the kind of maybe maybe I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. Maybe the reason why some aren't all on board on Pepe is he hasn't done it at Division One. You know what, though? Uh, yeah, I, what I, better I, place to start than Ohio State? <laughs> that's right. Well, with, with this that's running right. back roommate. But, I mean, you look at it, that's like saying, well, I mean, you know, those running backs, if, just, if you imagine if one or two of those running backs go over 1,000 yards, how easy is it going to be for Pepe to go out and get somebody next year? Oh, well, I agree. Jim Trussell was never a head coach at Division One until – So, here – here, okay, ready? put your tinfoil hats on, guys. Put your tinfoil hats on. On Tuesday – Okay, when Ryan Day was getting interviewed and they were asking him about recruiting at Ohio State and who he would want and things of that nature, he came right out and said that before Brian Hartline was a he he before they knew Brian Hartline was going to be a great recruiter, he had to be given a chance. I thought he was setting it up on Tuesday to announce that Pepe was going to be the pick. That's how I think. That's what in my head. Maybe I was just lying to myself in my head, but that's what when I heard Coach Day talk about recruiting at Ohio State and how that you know before Brian they knew Brian Hartline could do it or not. You know before he was going to be a great recruiter, they had to be given the opportunity. That that was in relation to who they were about to choose at running back. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. In my head, that's just what I was hearing. But I'm with you. Brian, I think you need to give Pepe a chance at this point. By the way, do you really think Tony Alford wanted to be here? It started to look like he didn't want to be here for whatever reason. I think once they hired Chip Kelly, I think he saw the writing on the wall. I know he didn't want to be here. Look where he ended up. You don't want to coach at Ohio State only to leave and go to Ann Arbor. You don't do that. No one does. If you go to Ann Arbor to coach, you didn't really want to be here. Pepe Pearson yeah. wants to be here. He is invested. Yeah. He would be fully invested in this job. This would be his dream job. Okay? I think that holds some value. That holds some weight. And 
you you can't tell me that Ryan Day looks in the eyes of those guys in that running back room and doesn't think that they don't feel a little bit betrayed. So you yeah. got you got to yeah. answer yeah. that yeah. betrayal by bringing them someone who's going to say, you know what, I ain't going anywhere because I've I've wanted to be here my whole life, and I'm finally getting mm-hmm. that opportunity. That's to me if that's why I would give the job to Pepe, but what do I know? I'm just a fat guy with a microphone. Well, I totally agree. I think at least if you bring him in and say, okay, we're going to put you on a year trial basis, see how you do. If you do good, then we'll extend your contract after the end of the year. But like I, but who am I? You know, I'm just a more average Joe, if you will. Coconut dreams. I really like you. I agree, Eric. I wouldn't jump ship and go to scum for a million bucks. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. He, all, you know what he w- he went for an extra hundred thousand dollars, Chris. What he end up going for? Extra hundred grand. And well, you know, what was the price to betray Christ? Thirty pieces of silver. Apparently, the price to betray your uh, Ohio State for Tony Alford was just another hundred grand. That's all it was. I got a serious feeling he's gonna pay a price come November. I hope so. He's going to hear it. Oh, my goodness, is he going to hear it when he walks onto that field. And and we're going to spend every week until then making sure that he hears it, right? Yeah. I just got done doing a video before we started the live show tonight, guys. Uh, What's Bugging Bogsy, episode number three. It's all about Tony Alford. If you, It'll, be, it'll post tomorrow. Make sure you guys go check that out. Um, <clears throat> so... In in the video, I'll give you a little little taste. In the video, uh, we talk about what the 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 comment he posted on Twitter this week. Did you see this, Chris? What Tony Alford posted? Oh yeah. Okay. Don't don't spoil the beans. So he he literally in one week has adopted the victim culture that that yeah. resides in Ann Arbor to the nth degree. And I just I had to tear it up, and thankfully, so did Buckeye Nation on Twitter. Brian, what else is on your mind tonight, brother? Uh, that was pretty much it. Just wanted to throw my take in there on Pepe. I feel like you know you at least you deserve a chance if he wants to be here. I feel like we haven't heard somebody say they really want to be at Ohio State coaching since probably since Chip Kelly or Brian Hartline getting the opportunity. So I just think you got to give Pepe a shot. That's all I have. Appreciate you. Call back, Brian, man. Appreciate you calling in. Right, Make sure man. you call back sometime, brother. Hey, no problem. Have a great night, guys. Take Love care. Show. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. I th- we got time for one more, Chris? Let's do one more. All right. It's Friday night, Eric. We got all night long. <laughs> well, I got to get up early and go to Toledo to do my taxes tomorrow, so I don't have all night. Sleep is overrated. By the way, Dylan, if you're still listening or watching, you can thank me if you took the over because Purdue has just gone on a massive run to start the second half. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> if you didn't Jeremy, listen, why not? Jeremy Yoder, uh, does Chris Wells have any coaching experience? Yes and no. High school, would that be? Pee Wee League. His son, his son is really good. Destroyed my stepson's team one time. So he's he's got so he's got. By the way, be on the lookout in a few years for Chris Wells' son. He is go, He is a baller. He's really good. Um, <laughs> Larry Daniels. What is this? Maybe Alfred dresses up as Connor Stallions to get less booze. Uh, all right, let's, uh, Larry, let's you go on the internet with that comment. <laughs> all right. We got a new caller, Chris. <clears throat> four, two, four. You're on the OHIO podcast with, uh, Eric and Chris, who are we talking to tonight? Hello, Eric and Chris. It's coconut dreams. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. What's happening? Oh, long distance. Yeah. Hey. Just want to say shout out to the Ohio podcast, OH, go Bucks. I want to say hello to my friend, Sean Schrock. Yeah, I was a football manager from 1986 through 1990. I graduated with a BS in elementary ed and a BA in Spanish, taught for 25 years in Los Angeles, moved to the Philippines in 2022 when I retired. And um, I knew Scotty Graham. Uh, he was there, I think his freshman year was my freshman year as a football manager. I was a manager of defensive backs two years under 
Coach Heater loved him. Coach Bruce, and then when Coach Bruce and everyone left after '87, I had three years with Coach Stook and um, three years with Coach Cooper. But getting back to Scotty, he was from Long Island, and he's he's a great guy. He's high energy. He's a, he brings a lot of fire in practice in the weight room. He's got the NFL experience. You know, he was a great player at Ohio State too, and uh, I just think he'd be a great. Uh, addition to the Buckeyes running backs room. So that hey, first off, are you calling from the Philippines for real? Yeah. I'm in my, I'm in my room right now trying not to wake up my girlfriend. She'll wake up and want breakfast and make me leave the, the <laughs> show. But uh yeah, I'm in I'm in Manila. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we're getting this good reception. That's phenomenal. The Philippines for real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. So I got to ask you, man, by the way, thanks for calling. And I appreciate yeah. you, the information you're Thank giving you. us on Scotty Graham, but I got to ask you, dude, yeah. on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you for this season? I'm super excited. I mean, the, the, the loss to scum at the end of the year, even though they've been cheating for the last three years and took the COVID cop out in 2020 jumps, uh, the loss to scum. And then the, the embarrassment against Missouri, you know, put me in a dark place for like a month. But then in the end, it's been a blessing in disguise. It got, it woke Coach Day up. It got everyone kind of like, hey, 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 we're this close, but we're not quite, you know, the car needs a tune up and boom, look what's been happening since. I mean, nothing but this pennies from heaven. So it was painful, but I'm super fired up, man. And I, I can't wait. It's going to be a long eight months or so or seven months, whatever it is till August 30th. And, um, but I hope we stomp everyone out and, and get another natty or two or three in a row. And, um, yeah, super excited. I love Ohio state. That's awesome, brother, man. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you got any questions for, for, uh, uh, coconut dreams? By the way, fin- phenomenal, phenomenal uh, handle name, coconut dreams. I love it. No, but great news. It's only five months. Hey, guys. August. Five months. Yeah, okay, Five that's months. better. About 150 days of in. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you know, I got I got a funny story for you too. Um, yeah, let's hear my it. My girlfriend here, who I met a, about a year ago, she knew nothing about football. She didn't even know what a football looked like, and she saw my love for Ohio State. I was always geared up and watching podcasts, and then one day she came in wearing an Ohio State shirt. She screenshotted a logo, printed printed it out, and put my name on the back of it. And I was like, the girl loves me. And um, we go out to the, by the pool here, and we throw a little Nerf ball around. And I got to tell you, she's got some skills. She can catch. She can throw. She loves the Buckeyes. And if I throw up an OH, what do you say, hon? I O. There it is, baby. So... I'm bringing I'm bringing the juice to to Manila, man. The Ohio State love. I love this. This is the this is the greatest call of all time, Chris. This is phenomenal. Thank you guys so much. So we have really made my day. So here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. We need we need your help, okay? We are the yeah. number one Ohio State podcast in the country of Australia, and that's because we we have a very good friend who from Australia who started to listen to us when we were just a little. Little Nobody podcast, audio only. He ended up coming to Columbus, going to his first Ohio State game mm-hmm. a couple years ago. We were able to take him. I want you to do me a favor. If you yeah. and your girlfriend ever fly back to Columbus, I want you to to let yes. me know so that we can pick you up at the airport and treat you to a great weekend here oh, wow. in Columbus, Ohio, man. Oh, man, no way, Eric. Thank you so much, Eric and, and Chris. I really appreciate you guys. That we want to be the thing. I just love that you love the Buckeyes too. Absolutely. Hey, man, I was born into this. It was, yeah. it was born in, it was born into yeah. me. I had no, I had no other shot. My cousin is Ryan Miller, who played in the mid nineties. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my cousin. He uh, runs and operates the two, uh, the second and seven organization with Luke Fickle and Mike Vrabel, uh, yeah. who were his, uh, his roommates yeah. there at college, and so. Uh, as a youngster, I got the opportunity to go in the locker room when I was just a little kid with Ryan. I, I met 
Vrabel, Fickle, yeah. when they were players. I met Orlando Pace. I met Eddie George. I met John Cooper. Um, yeah. And believe it or not, I met Orlando Pace's mom, which well, that was phenomenal. We sat right behind her in the game. But that was my introduction into, cool. into this thing called Ohio State. But, um, yeah, I appreciate the phone call very much. And I'm serious now. Sure. We, we need your help. We need you to help us make the OHIO podcast the number one Ohio State podcast in the Philippines. All right? You're my ambassador. I'll do it. I'll do it. You're my ambassador, I'll, brother. I'll put it out there. All right. I'll put it out there for sure. And I, I got to say one more thing. Just my experience, the five years being associated with the football team, the greatest thing ever, the be running out of the tunnel, being a ball boy, working at practices, um, hanging out with the players, living in Park Hall with the players, going to the bowl games. I mean, what a blessing. It's nothing I take and say, well, I was a manager. You know, No, it's not like that. I was so blessed. The greatest experiences, the greatest players, the greatest coaches, the, some of the greatest wins. And, um, man, this, so it just brings me joy to this day. It really does. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coconut. I'll always be a buck guy. There you, you go. Too. You too, guys. Have a great have a great Friday night there. Okay. Take care, Eric and Chris. Appreciate. Thanks for the phone call, my friend. Sir. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Go Bucks. That was fun. So the, can can I can I just geek out for a second? <laughs> okay, geek away. I know because we got Der- Derek's in the uh in the in the uh on deck circle here. Okay. This is why I do this. If you see our videos, a lot of times we do videos that are considered controversial, such as the one we posted about Ryan Day heading over to Clemson. Ryan Day was there on Clemson's campus because RJ took a, took a, campus visit Mm -hmm. that's his right we made the video talking about ryan day probably sat down in the office of uh dabo sweeney and they talked shop i don't know if that's true or not that's speculation we got hammered in the comment section for that video i mean people literally were cussing me out, telling me I'm a terrible fan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for just speculating on whether Ryan Day talked shop with Dabo Sweeney or not. Here's the funny thing about YouTube, guys. The more controversial you are, the better your numbers get. And the better your numbers get, the more the algorithm likes you, the more it sends you out to have moments like we just had. So to all of those who... Don't like me because we did a controversial video. I say, because of that video and because of other videos like that, that YouTube algorithm likes for some odd reason, we get to have people like Coconut Dreams call us from the freaking Philippines. So that's why I do this, man. I love that. That was that was my be- maybe on my top ten. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, we have a lot of fun doing this show and yeah, you know, you do, you say you do the controversy because of the ratings. Well, I do a controversial takes just because I don't care. Cause you are controversial. <laughs> I, I, you know, if I think it's what, if I think it, I'm going to say it the end, but you know what? It, it is always a lot of fun when we to talk to somebody like uh, what we had there with, you know, coconut dreams. Uh, you know, when, when Matt calls in, you know, that's, it's great. You know? Yeah. We got to get um, Maddie butcher to call in from Australia. Now, it, now that I know that like it was, that was crystal clear. Yeah. Okay. So we tried, we tried once. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Yoder, the Ohio state algorithms are off the charts in 2024. <laughs> okay. We got one more call. Let's get to it. Oh, uh, let's see. I think this is Derek. Derek, you're on. What's up, buddy? Well, I'm not sure what I can give you the tingle down the leg that your last caller did. <laughs> but hell, I'll give it a shot. I, hey, how about this? You just be you because I like you. How about that, man? 
Well, I mean, that's all I can be because I don't, you know, I don't live in the, in the thrill of Manila. I live in boring central Indiana. So. <laughs> so what part of Indiana, though? What, what part? Well, hopefully it's the part that the Ohio State uh, reclaims here in the not-so-distant uh, uh, future where uh, one uh, Lucas Oil Stadium is. Uh, so, okay. So since you're in Indy, I got a question for you. I want your honest opinion. Which yeah. city is more bougie, Dublin, Ohio, or Carmel, Indiana? Oh, uh, Carmel, Indiana, by far. Okay. And if people don't know what we're talking about, go look up the average cost per house right now in Carmel, Indiana, and you'll get your answer. Unbelievable. I've, well, worked, I've worked there, so I, I've been there a few times, so. I can tell you with 100% certainty, I don't live in Carmel, Indiana. <laughs> okay. I Well, I if you did, um, congratulations, but I figured probably not because you're calling our show. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of work in Carmel, Indiana, over in Zionsville. Um, la- a couple years ago, I was in Hendricks County, Indiana, or Hendrickson or Hendricks County, Indiana, over there. So I've been dancing all around Indianapolis for work the last three or four years. But um, let's. What's on your mind tonight, Derek? Running backs coach, the 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 which room's better, wide receiver, defensive back. What 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 do you want to talk about? You know, I I have to get I have to give you guys credit because. Um, you know, coming up with the question right off the bat uh, this evening, you know, as as, uh, as Jim Harbaugh would say, which room has it better than us? Um, you know, I, for the for the longest time, I think it's ab- abundantly clear that it was the the wide receivers, and I think the uh, production and the track record of first round draft picks um, states the case for it. But it's a clearly obvious that you know Tim Walton has worked his backside off and the room that he has produced now with defensive backs is if not level with the running back may have leveled up or leveled up um to the sorry sorry not running backs wide receivers may have leveled up over the uh, wide receivers I mean when you have potentially at least a first round pick with Caleb Downs and obviously a first round pick in Denzel Burke. You tell me another defensive back room in the country and, and I'll wait that will have not one, but two potential first round picks in it. You, you know, I'll wait. Silence. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here trying to think I can't come up with one. Can you, Chris? No. No, I can't. And then, you know, to speak on depth at defensive back, you know, before when, you know, when you had to have your, your ones come out, you know, obviously there was a drop off. And then when I mentioned earlier, you know, you were scared to death that the opposing team would uh, throw the ball deep because you didn't know what you were going to get. Well, is there really a drop off with if Matthews has to come in? I, I don't believe so. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe there's a drop off at all. I don't. We don't think have there... a Bryce and Shaw back there anymore. So <laughs> I don't think there's a drop off. And here's the thing, Derek. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to get your take on this. They should be playing more depth earlier in games, earlier in the season, for the simple fact that you're going to play upwards of 15 or 16 football games. If you're going to win a national championship now, so you you yeah, I, you I, have I, to create depth, and you know Tim Walton spoke on that this uh, yesterday. You know he talked about spring is the time to get your younger guys ready and make sure that your older guys are sh- getting shined up. I, I loved loved that quote. I'm I'm creating depth in the spring is what he was basically getting at. And the fact that the wide receiver room the last couple of years, according to Brian Hartline, admittedly had their way with our defensive you know, backfield. 
uh, in practice and is not the door is that is not the case this year tells you how much growth a is in that room on the defensive side and on the flip side of that that there is some development taking place on the offensive side and it appeared to me again correct me if i'm wrong that brian hartline is enjoying the heck out of this oh and and how can you um but yeah the, I, I think and, and again I, I could be wrong and i may get blasted for this and you know what as as zach smith will say I'm, i'll stand in the paint i have no problem with that kind of like what zach Eady does but um i think the defensive backs for the last few seasons have been kind of soft in my opinion i, I could be wrong and and now they've leveled up obviously they've gotten tougher uh, Tim Walton has, like I said, he's recruited his tail off and, you know, with the depth that he's built now and, and still that's not, and that's not talking about the guys that have committed that are going to be coming here in the future. That's just saying the here and now, and then going up against the receivers, the group of receivers that the defensive backs get a battle against day in and day out. I think they're absolutely right. Iron sharpening iron. And there's again, no defensive room in the country that is going up against the um, talent, talented wide receivers that Ohio state has that they're putting out. There. It's, it's a, it's a snowball. It's an avalanche. It's a snowball going downhill. Um, the momentum created from Brian Hartline's recruiting helped uh, Tim Walton recruit. He admitted such today that it's easier to walk into a defensive back rooms and say, hey, you're going up against the best in practice every single day to prepare you for the next level of football in your life. And, you know, it, it, it does. It's iron sharpens iron. So it, it makes recruiting the positions easier based off of the success you're having and have had. So what we need to do, and maybe this is my next question for you, Derek, is what, looking at that model between the receivers and defensive backs, between uh, Hartline and Walton, what rooms at Ohio State do you think need to replicate that and and how? Chris man, shaking his head, no. That, that's a great it, no, 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 it's got to be the yeah. trenches, man. It's got to be the trenches. The, the, we, ha, we have had such a discrepancy in the last few years. You know, uh, Derek was talking about soft. You know, the offensive line is where we've had soft. That's where we've had soft the last few years is in the offensive line. So for me, I think it's got to be we have to see that kind of intensity pick up. You know, we've got a defensive line room where we potentially have two to three first-round guys if they play it all up to potential this season. Uh, if we can get the offensive line to, to have that same mentality, to push uh, the defense to push the offensive line the same way that we're seeing of our receivers and defensive backs, there's not a team in this country that can, that can even come close to stopping Ohio State if they get rolling like that. There, what's your thoughts on that? Chris, Chris I, can't, I can't agree with you more. I think you're absolutely spot on. I do think it is up front, specifically the offensive line. Now, for as much as Ohio State fans and, and Buckeye Nation loves to bash on the team up north, I'm going to give them a, a little credit because outside of outside the cheating scandal, outside of that, where were they built the best for? Oh, the trenches. Yeah, they, they would were, maul they you. Sides. Their offensive line would absolutely maul you. The road I, graders. I think man. you're absolutely right. That is where the next attitude adjustment needs to be made. Is the offensive line because that that's who if you're if you're a high school coach if you played a high a down of football in your life the offensive line and defensive lines respectively is what sets the tone for the rest of the game. So until you can get an offensive line that is, that is going to go out there down after down and say you know what we're going to continue to come at you down after down and you know what either you're either you're going to tap out or you're going to push back and I don't think Ohio State's there yet then that's exactly where the that room needs to be improved and have that type of attitude. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you because, 
That's what's beaten us the last few years. Yes, there, there's been the cheating going on, but we have been getting torched in the trenches by that team up north, and that's where we need to improve. We need to have guys out there throwing people around. And like I said, we've got two to three potential first-round picks on that defensive line that should be elevating the play of that offensive line. Now, we've heard that there's some guys, um, specifically Josh Fryer was mentioned among them, who has had a tremendous offseason. We've heard this in the past. I need to see it. I need to see Fryer. I need to see Jax. I need to see these guys out there throwing people around and making a statement with their physical play. Because, you know, that's where we've last lacked physicality more than anything. The defensive backs, I thought we saw the defensive backs improving their physicality last year with uh, kind of David Ignosen coming in and really changing the tone with the corners. He was a physical player. He brought a, a physical and mental toughness to uh, the defensive backs as a player. Um, we need that on the offensive line as well. Um, we need somebody to step up. We need that defensive line to start pushing them and really just, you know, in my opinion, that's the difference between this team being a contender and being a hands-down champion. Yeah, Chris, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. It, it all starts up front, and I think there's no, you know, there's no two ways about it. And also, I, that may have to do with with recruiting too. You know, we know Justin Fry has, you know, swung in uh, in hit home runs with some of the guys that he is he has recruited. So maybe that has a little bit to do with it um, as well. But but I think you're absolutely right. And you know, Ohio State needs five guys that just want to throw people out of the club. That's what they need. Five guys that have the attitude, they just want to throw everybody out of the club. Yeah. Yeah, we – Eric likes to say we need angry Ryan Day. We need angry offensive linemen. We need guys who play with anger and – and and I don't want to say hatred because I don't, I don't have it, – It's not – it's not recruiting rankings and – how big your name was in high school does not matter on the offensive line. It doesn't. Go back to the go back to the 2014 national championship team. Those guys were just mean dudes. They were they were absolute just bullies. And you had two of them were three star recruits. Well, and the one I like to go back to is you talk about Nick Mangold, man. Maybe one of the best centers to ever play the game. Future future it's NFL Hall of Famer, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, he will be. Three-star guy. But he was an Ohio guy, and he was just mean and nasty when he stepped out there on the field. And that's what we've been missing. Mean and nasty. Coconut dreams. Uh, Got to play like somebody disrespected your mama. That's Absolutely. A right. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah there's, there, there's no two ways around it. Like, I know you guys need to uh, probably get to someone else or, or wrap things up. So I'm going to leave you with two things. One, and I, and I preach this when I coach high school football, I want to coach, I want to coach kids that have the want to. I can't, that's the one thing I can't coach into. You've got to have the want to, you've got to have the want to, to want to throw people out of the club. And, and it's a mindset. And, you know, you, I, I can't coach effort either. So those are the two things you got to have the want to, and you got to have the effort. And two, you were talking earlier about the, the betting aspect of sports, especially when it comes to March Madness. And by the way, no one cares about my bracket, so I'm glad you didn't ask. But <laughs> over, under, over, under, hang on, over, under, the number of first-round picks Ohio State has in the 2025 NFL draft. I'm counting. Give me a minute. Seven. That would be a record, wouldn't it? Isn't it? What's the record? Six, the record. Georgia, right? Yep. I see four on defense. Well, hold on. One of them's a sophomore, so that can't happen. Your, your book, your book in defensive ends. Denzel. Yeah. It's three. All right. That I think those are surefire first rounders three there. On I, I think I think if Egg, he has a big year, Tyreek could be. Egbuka four. Egbuka. Possibly Jackson, both maybe. running backs. Possibly. 
Maybe Donovan and Jackson. And Donovan Jackson. Seven. What if Will Howard falls out? Then you could have eight. Over so we're gonna set the eight. over under at seven. What do you got, Derek? I I you know what? I, I think that's highly respectable. Um, and that's kind of where I was at coming up uh with that as well and just thinking about it. But yeah, I think that's the uh, seven. So um you know, Michigan can have the 44 seniors they want, and, you know, everyone's going to get drafted according to Jim Harbaugh. I'll take seven first-round picks over everyone to get drafted nine times out of nine. Last mock draft I ha- saw, only one was getting drafted in the first round from that team last year, and that was J.J., which I think will be and a I bump. still don't get that. I still bump. don't get that. How Total. in the world is a guy who – First of all, let's go back to this for a second. I, and I, I'm going off on a tangent, but my, my God, the, the guy had, what, three, four games where he threw 15 passes or less? And you're going to have the audacity to call Lamar Jackson a running back coming out of high or out of college, but you, then you got a guy who's throwing 15 passes or less in games, and you're going to say he's a first-round quarterback. Hey, let, me, let, me answer your, let me answer you with this question. Justin Fields just got traded for a six-round pick. If you think J.J. McCarthy is better than Justin Fields... Then you're on crack! You're crazy. You're crazy. You're nicer than I am. I'd say you'd have to be a crackhead to think that. (laughs) Oh, shoot. Sean Schrock, OSU has the most first-round draft picks. True. They do. Uh, J.J. will be this year's Will Levis. Who? Uh, I get it. <laughs> I, I would not insult hey, Will Levis what, like that. What do you think ever happened to Will Levis's girlfriend? Remember her that night? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't come back for the second night, did she? No. She, no she, I thought she stayed home the second night. <laughs> no, she found her a new boyfriend after that first night's experience. Oh, gosh darn it. Uh, Derek, man, thank you so much for calling, brother. I appreciate you. But, you know, you talk about Will Levis. Hey, thank you. Hey, th- thanks, thanks for having me, and uh, I'm sure uh, we've got a huge get-together here coming up in the uh, next few weeks. Yes, and we do. Talk about Justin Fields. The only question I have from Chicago Bears, you know, Chicago Bears doing Chicago Bear things, but how come you never surrounded Justin Fields with the talent that you're surrounding, uh, finger-painting, snuggy-holding Caleb Williams? That's a good question. Um, you know, Unfortunately, in the NFL, where you get drafted Me matters. Too. It really does. Uh, the Mannings, the Mannings understood that. They knew that. Um, I, I, I can't stand Caleb Williams at all. Uh, I, I am not a Notre Dame fan, but the night that Notre Dame absolutely rocked his world, I cheered like crazy. Um. Uh, because I, I loved seeing that. And now poor John Kennedy, is, who's a Bears fan, has to cheer for that. <laughs> he's having tough – he's hey, having – Let me suggest a uh, transition to a new team. You know, you might want to consider Detroit. Ugh. Get out of here. You're crazy. Derek, thanks for calling, brother. Appreciate Thank you, man. Ah, oh, shoot. What a show, man. What a- Can you hear me? Yeah, no, I'm just trying to see. You know what, Sean? I wonder the same daggone thing. I said it the night that it happened. Why didn't Cleveland come up with a fifth-round pick even to ship over for for Fields? First of all, you keep him out of the out of the Steeler rotation that way. Secondly, he, he's a viable option. He plays in the same style of offense as what you want to run with with uh, oh. Pervo the Magnificent there, uh, Watson, uh, you, you know, I mean, and, and you know Watson's going to stay healthy for more than three or four games anyhow. So, you know, he would have been a perfect fit. I, I just don't get it. You know, you talk about Chicago can't get out of their own way. Man, I love Cleveland. I love the Browns. I, I've, I've been a fan for years. But, my God, we can't get out of our own way sometimes, and, and that's what it feels like. 
Thank you, Sean. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate you for stopping in. Uh, Coconut Dreams, thanks for calling. Appreciate that more than you realize, man. That was that was a great moment. Uh, call back anytime. Uh, hopefully it, it didn't cost you like international phone charge or anything, but uh, um, we're good on my end, so I appreciate that. Uh, another great show, Chris. We will be back Sunday night, 8 o'clock, for our live show. Make sure you join us again Sunday evening at 8 o'clock. Be live in the chat. We'll have more great topics to dissect and, and look at. And uh, Derek was right. We are getting ready for our tailgate at uh, the um, spring game, Chris. Uh, we'll, we'll let every, all of you know where we're going to be located because usually where we're at, right outside the shoe, it gone. They are they have tore that parking lot up. Um, I don't know what it they're doing. Hope to be, it is no more. It's gone. So I don't know what they're planning on putting there. Um, I can't imagine that's where they're going to put the new ice hockey rink. No way. No. Hopefully, it's a parking garage that parks like a gazillion cars. Um, that would be uh, that would be nice. So you can get closer to the stadium. Larry, appreciate you. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Larry is one of our uh, members. Um, so we appreciate Larry chiming in tonight. You know, Larry, I'll be in contact with you this week. Get your information uh, so I can get you your uh, T-shirt, buddy. Uh, and you too can get a T-shirt. Just go uh, hit the join button on our YouTube page at the Ohio Podcast uh, on YouTube. Check us out on Twitter at the Ohio Pod. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook at the Ohio Podcast on Facebook as well. Um, Chris, anything else before we head out of here? Hey, don't forget when you sign up as a member, you will be getting free shipping at our online store, which is going to. Uh... We have some news on that real quick as well. Yep. Big announcement on our online store coming your way. We're working on that on the uh, on the podcast or on the website, which you can go check out, theohiopodcast.com. Uh, read a bunch of great articles written by myself. Chris is going to have some up coming soon, and you'll be able to check out um, the store as well. Sonny, congratulations on your first round win, Sonny. For, he's an Illini fan. Wanted to come in and check in with my favorite Ohio State show. Great, great job tonight, Jen. Say, hey, Sonny, appreciate that, man. Um, appreciate you. Uh, we need to get you on the show sometime. Um, that'd be a lot of fun. Maybe you can call in when we do, uh, we have our call in shows, have you come call in and we'll chat it up big 10 style, buddy. All right, guys, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you Sunday evening. Uh, check out the video tomorrow that will be posted, uh, on what's bugging Bogsy. We're going to, we're going to tear in to good old Tony Alford. Pretty good. We're going to rip him a new one. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure we'll get a ton of hate from the, the fans up North, but Hey, we're here for that, Chris. That's we what we do. That. That's, what, that's what we live for. Our our motto is just a bunch of Buckeye fans talking about the a bunch of dudes talking about the Buckeye fans and hating on Michigan. So it's what we're gonna do. So we'll do it again Sunday night. Till next time, be kind to one another. I owe someone's OH. Sing Carmen, Ohio with all your heart. OH! I owe. Go Bucks. <laughs>